VLOOKUP has been the go-to function for far too long. Look at this chart. VLOOKUP dominated from the time Excel was created, and it's only in recent years that people have started to come to their senses. Everyone in 2025 and beyond will be using Index Match. Let me show you why. Let's say we have a sheet of data from a global tech company. The CEO wants us to look at complaints against four individuals and decide whether we should fire them. Let's try using VLOOKUP to find their salaries and what each of them have been reported to human resources for. In the first case, it's Liam Murphy, so we can highlight cell H8. For the table array, we just need to highlight the entire table. And for our final parameter, we need the column index. And we want the column containing the salary to begin with. So we'll select column three. And lo and behold, we get the wrong value. It's saying his salary is 17,000. But when we manually check the sheet, we can see that it's 122,000 because VLOOKUP only looks to the right. But doing it with index match is simple. All we need to do is add the array. And because we're looking for the salary, we can just highlight that column or type C2 to C37. Then we add a match function to tell the formula the location of the salary we'd like to retrieve. The person whose salary we're looking for is Liam Murphy, so we can input H8. And we know that all the names are contained in column F, and it's that column that we want to use. So we can add that column for our lookup array by typing F2 to F37. And all we need to do after that is add a zero to tell the match function that we want an exact match. And when we hit enter, 122,000 is returned, which, as we can double check, is the correct value. Now we want to find the salaries for the rest of the employees without having to manually rewrite the formula. And all we need to do is adjust the formula so that the arrays are using absolute cell references meaning that they stay fixed as we drag the formula down. So I'm adjusting the index array and the matches lookup array, and then we should be good to drag. And when we do, we can find out Marty's, Hans, and Matteo's salaries. It looks like Marty's doing pretty well for himself. Next, we need to find out why people have been complaining about them. And to do that, we need to copy the formula across so that we can take a look at which columns we need to edit so that the complaints are returned. And it looks like in this case, all we're going to need to do is change the index array from column C to column D, the complaints column. And I think that's it. And when we hit enter, we can find out the complaints. The complaint against Liam is that he's been doing half marathons and he talks about it. And the boss has asked us to provide a recommendation for Liam and the rest of the people in our list. So let's make a new column. And we can title this one, fire or not. And this is where we'll be making our recommendations for the boss. I think for Liam, we fire him if he starts asking for sponsorship. I can put up with some half marathon chat, but there's no way I'm sponsoring him. I'm also going to make sure all the employees know that they need to report him to HR if he ever talks about a marathon again. Marty can take a pay cut because he sounds unbearably smug. He's already on $140,000 a year, so it shouldn't hurt him too much. Hans is getting banned from eating in the building. If he has any lunch, any drinks, or any snacks anywhere near the building, he's getting the chop. He can consider this his final warning. And for Matteo, we'll give him a raise. Good football chat gets me through the day. So that sheet is all ready to go now. We can send that to the boss with our recommendations and it's time to move on to body mass index. Here we have a chart showing how height and weight determine what category a person is put in. We're going to break the index match function down into its separate components to understand exactly how the index and match functions work individually before combining them back together. Index takes input for the grid you want to look at and the exact coordinates where you want to look it returns whatever is in the cell at those coordinates. So in our case, we have labeled the grid coordinates to begin with, and we know that John's weight corresponds to row eight and column seven. So we can input those values to find out his result. We can do it again for Michael in the same way. 260 pounds corresponds to row three, and five foot is column four. And we find out that John is overweight and Michael is obese, but it's time to take the handlebars off. In another BMI chart, we have removed the row and column numbers, and we're going to use the match function to find them for us, before combining it into a single formula, which will find the BMIs automatically. Let's start by using the match function to determine which row John's weight is in. Type equals match, and then for the lookup value, we can just click on the cell John's weight is in. And for our array, we can just highlight the y-axis. Then we want an exact match, so we type zero, and it returns eight. And we know from before that it is in the eighth row, so it's correct. And we do something very similar to find out the height row. All we need to do is another match function and then click on the cell that John's height is in before highlighting the array that we need to use, which in this case is the x-axis. And once that's highlighted, 
All we need to do is add a zero for our match type because we want an exact match again. Our index function to find something in this BMI chart needs two coordinates, and now we have one for the height and the weight. So now we can use those two coordinates with the index function to return whatever is in the cell at those coordinates. All we need to do now is write the function. And for our array, we just highlight the grid, which is A20 to O31. For our row number, we highlight our row number. And for our column number, we highlight cell F34. And we get the same result as before, so we can be pretty sure it's correct. Breaking down the formula into separate functions is great for understanding how they work. But let's now try combining them into a single formula. This time, we'll use match functions for our row and column numbers, but the array we're looking at will stay the same, so we can just highlight the grid A20 to O31 again. Our first match function will be to find the row for John's weight. So we select his weight as our lookup value, and highlight the range of weights as our lookup array, which is the range A20 to A30. And then all we need to do is add zero for the match type because we want an exact match. For the second match function, we're looking at John's height. And for that, we need cell D34 for our lookup value, the cell that contains his height. And then for our range of heights, we want to select the x-axis, which is A31 to O31. And again, we're looking for an exact match, so we choose zero for the match type. And when we hit enter, we get the same result as when we did it manually. All we did this time was put the match functions inside the index formula, instead of calculating them separately and referencing them within the index formula. Now I'm going to adjust the references to the grid to make sure we're using absolute values, so that we don't have to manually type out the formula again, and we can just drag it to get Michael's value. So now we have both results, I'm going to add absolute references to the manual calculations so that we can verify both results match. And we do this in exactly the same way. The manual BMI calculation is giving us a spill error, but don't worry, that's just because the cells it's referencing are blank. It'll be fine as soon as we adjust the weight row and height columns in E and F34. And again, all we need to fix there is the array references, and then we'll be able to drag the formulas. And when we do, we get the weight row as 3 and the height column as 4. And both results in the BMI manual calculation and the BMI as one function match. Now an email just came in from the boss who likes firing people for running marathons, and this time he wants us to find out how vulnerable his company's employees are to hackers. We can see that we have a grid with number of characters on the y-axis and password difficulty on the x-axis. The combination of these determines how long it takes a hacker to guess it. Michael's password is 10 characters long and contains lowercase letters and numbers. The boss wants us to find out how long it would take hackers to crack the password so that he can sure up his password protocols if he needs to. So within our index function, we need to select the results array, which is B2 to B17. For our first match function, we're looking at the number of characters. So we can select the number of characters in Michael's password and then highlight the array containing the number of characters and then choose match type zero for an exact match. For our second match function, we're looking at the password type. So here, we want to select the type of password that Michael has, which is lowercase and numbers, and then select the array containing all of the password types on the grid. And our index match function is done. Our table tells us that it would take one year to crack Michael's password. So let's try another password with 15 characters, with lowercase, uppercase, numbers, and special characters to see what we get. And it seems we've got ahead of ourselves. As with the previous example, we need to use absolute cell references for the array ranges. We need to adjust the range on the characters, the range for the grid, and the range for the password type. If you ever have an error dragging an index match formula, the first thing to check is the array references, as that's often where it goes wrong. And when we've done that, we can drag it again. And we find out that that type of password would take 10,000 years to crack. Let's try it again just to make sure it's working. This time we're going to use three characters and a password type of lowercase only. I don't have high hopes for this one, and this is probably the reason why most websites make you have long passwords with capitals and special characters. But as you can see, index match is nowhere near as complicated as it first seems when you see that intimidating syntax. Once you break it down, it's really just common sense combined with knowing the correct formula. The more data that you have, the more useful index match can be. It can save you an awful lot of time when looking for specific data, so it's an important skill to learn. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you now have everything you need to find the data you need quickly and efficiently. I'm sure you'll find countless uses for this formula throughout your business.
If you have any other areas of Excel that are giving you some bother, please do let us know in the comments section below, and we'll do our best to cover these in the future. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.